Hi, this is Doug. In this video, I'll cover how to create a probability impact table. It's also known as a risk assessment table. If you're doing project management, you probably have to list out a bunch of risk and how to deal with them before they derail your project. It's a handy tool to figure out what kind of issues you have and how to deal with them. Or in business speak, you're gonna create mitigation plans for your risk. In this video, I'll show you how to create a three by three matrix with probability impacts of low, medium, and high. I'll also cover extras like how to create a color code for your low, medium, and high values, drop down list, and other things to help your table and matrix stand out. So here I have my risk table and my risk assessment matrix. So you can see I have my different probabilities, low, 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 medium, and it goes down the range. And, and depending on my selection of probability and impact, they count out here. So let's say, for example, I change this first one from low, and let's make this high here. You can see now it's medium. And now we have an increased count there. First, I'll build out the risk table, and then we'll build out the risk matrix. And there'll be other cool things we can build out like this drop down list. And we'll understand this big formula here. And we'll build out the colors here. This is conditional format. You can see that when it changed from medium to low here, you can notice the color change. So we'll see how we can do that with conditional formatting. And this is where we have some count functions. And it'll count the number of risks that fit into this bucket here. So let's see how we can do this. So I'm already in another sheet here and I just copied over the headers here. So I will start off with the risk table and let's just call this risk one and then risk, risk two, All right? And we'll fill it out for about nine risk. So type those two out, drag the fill handle down and let's get down to nine risk here, right? So probability and impact, let's create the drop downs here. This is using the data validation feature. All I need to do is do alt DL, it's gonna bring up the data validation table, or if you like to go old school and use the ribbon, it's under data and the da data validation. Those bring up the same window. We wanna do a list. And here, all I need to do is type low, comma, medium, comma, and then high. And that's gonna bring down my data validation list. And you can see I've got it here. So I can just copy this over across, drag the fill handle, copy it across, if I want to have it apply to the rest, I'll just select that and drag the fill handle down here. And so it applies everywhere now. So I've got that there. So that is my data validation list. It's really cool. So you don't have to type it in. You just need to select it. Now the risk, this is where we have that large formula. And basically the structure of the formula is it's going to be three if statements. So if else, so if something's true, then this, if it's false, then this, but it's gonna be if statement for low, medium, and high. And within those if statements are a bunch of or and and statements. And the or and and statements determine the combination of probability and impact that give you the low, medium, high. So let's spit out the first one for low. So equals if, and then we do or, and then we do and, comma. So the first one is if this cell equals low, and we'll have to put that in quotes, and, the cell C8 equals low. That's going to be a low for the risk, but there's two other criteria that also make it low. And the second one would be when the probability is low and the impact is medium. And third one would be when the probability is medium and impact is low. And so those will all give you a low risk and that'd be in the green colors. So let's build out the second one here. And C8, that's the impact, is medium. And, and B8 equals the probability is low. Close quotes, so close parentheses, and our third criteria, and that's an and, when our probability B8 equals medium, and C8, which is our impact, that's gonna equal low, right? So close parentheses. And in any time any of these three criteria is met, that's why we have our or statement, anytime the combination of these three sets are met, then our risk is low. Our risk is low, right? So that is our first kind of big portion of the if statement. Then we have to do another if statement, right? And it's, we're gonna do the same thing with medium and we're gonna do the same thing with high, those two risks. 
I don't think you want to watch me build it out, but you can see it at the end how it all looks. And I'll just kind of speed up this part of the video. So here we have it built out. Um, usually these long type of functions and formulas, there's bound to be some error. Let's see what happens when I hit return. Let's see where there's a problem and there is a problem. So let's see where I can find that problem. And sometimes usually a missing comma or parentheses, what I like to do is kind of separate the different big portions of the function. Press Alt, Enter, and let's see if we can find out where the error is. Increase this a little bit to see where my problem is. So this usually makes it a little bit easier to see where I need to fix it. And here we can see like, you know, there's a, they, these usually should be carbon copies in a way of each other in terms of the comma, the parentheses and whatnot. But you can see here that, you know, I have closing parentheses here, but I don't have one here. So I need to have a closing parentheses there, right? And all the other ones seem to be okay. Let's see if that figured it out. Press enter, no. But also another way to figure out where you're troubleshooting for your combination of formulas is to select an area within your combination and go under formulas, calculate now. Let's see if the problem occurs in the first area. And it probably does. And I think I forgot to add a quote here. And after that, let's see if this particular portion of the combination of functions worked. Click calculate now. And now it just says we're missing parentheses. So it figured out that there was something that we fixed and there's another error. So let's see if I click enter here, did it take in the function? Yes, it did. So that particular thing worked. So now this is how the function work. It makes it easier to view when we broke it out with the alt enter with the line breaks. Easier to read, um, but it doesn't affect the functionality of the combination of formulas. You can see here that we've got our functionality. Let's test it now. I'll press escape. We didn't want to do that. Press escape again, because we're in edit mode. Let's do this and make this low and then make this low. What does it give us? It gives us a low, right? I'm gonna copy the formula down here to the other eight risk, and we're gonna test it out and see if it functions the way it's supposed to. Oh, I noticed that in my data validation, I put capitals for both the H and H. H and I, so uh, that doesn't affect the functionality. Let's change that. That doesn't look good. Alt DL and ah, uh, here we go. Let's do that to I. Press enter. It's correct in this first one, but I got to drag it over to my other ones to make sure it fits there and drag it down. And it should be all changed, but let's just change it back and I'll just speed through this one. Now we want to add the colors here to indicate low, medium, high, the green, yellow, and red. So what we can do is we can select our cells here, go under home, go under conditional formatting, and let's highlight cells for text that contains. So the first one's going to be low. So when it says low, let's change that to green, go to custom format, click, go to fill, and that's going to be green. Click OK, click OK, and those are green, right? Do the same thing for medium, conditional formatting. Highlight cells, text contains, and in this case, now it's medium. Medium, if I can spell it correctly, medium, and then custom format. The cell border is going to be yellow, uh, the cell fill is going to be yellow. Click OK, click OK, and now we've got those mediums as yellow. Same thing with high. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing with high, and those are going to be all red. Red is bad. Click OK, red. All right, and now we've got our red. Double click the column here to auto fit. And now we have that there. Let's make this one, the formula bar, bring it back up there. So it doesn't take up all the space here. Get those double headed arrows and we've got that. So there's our risk table. Now how do we create our risk matrix? This is where I'll build out the label. So start low and then medium and then tab and then high. Do the same thing for the other ones. I'll just Control C to copy and I'll transpose it here and then Control V or paste, paste, transpose, which is this one here. I got low, medium, high here. This will be impact, press enter, and this will be probability, press enter. Let's center this across 
or we can just do a merge and center. Click that, and then we'll do a merge and center here. All right, usually it's not a good idea, but you know, this is okay. Uh, we'll center that, and we'll pretty up later. So how do we get the colors in the cell? I'm not gonna bother with doing conditional formatting here because these are static, right? So I'll just select these cells, press Control, select that one, and select that one for non-contiguous cell selection, and that's all gonna be green, right? The middle cells here, this one's down here, press Control, select that cell, that one, that one. These are gonna be yellow, right? So these are gonna be the medium risk ones. And of course the high risk, press Control key, that's gonna be all red, right? So that's we're building out our matrix here. Now, how do we get the, num the numbers? And that's basically gonna be a count ifs function. So all I need to do is do different count ifs functions for each of the cells. Oh, I missed something here. This should be low at the bottom and this should be high at the top, right? And that fixes that. So now how do we get our numbers here? So this is gonna be using a count ifs function with the S. So what we're gonna do is type count ifs with the S, press tab to open that. My criteria range, well, the first criteria range is my probability column. And I'm using the whole column because I'm, not, I'm gonna assume I'm not putting anything up here, but as I go to risk 10, 11 there, there's gonna be added down here. So my criteria range is column B, comma, and what is the criteria? Does any of them equal low, right? If it equals low, then it's going to count the number. But since it's a count ifs, it has to meet another condition. So the other criteria range is this column. If that one, comma, if that cell criteria range equals low up here, then it's gonna count it. So it has to meet those both criteria. Close, press enter to close that, and you can see that it's picked up one. Let's do one at the far end here, right? Now we're gonna type count ifs with the S, press tab. My first column criteria range, comma, my criteria is that high, probability is high, then we'll count that, but we have our second criteria, which is our impact column. Let's move this tool tip, the tip here. This column, comma, does it equal high here? Press enter, and it does, so we have our one there, and so that's that one there, so it's gonna count that. So let's say if I re remove that one, let's make that low, it's not gonna count anymore, it's zero now, right? And so let's make that back to high. So that's how we're gonna do it for the other seven. And I'll just speed through the video on this one. So we've got our formulas all laid out here in our matrix. If we wanted to see how they all look, instead of going each cell to cell, there's a keyboard shortcut trick for that. Press the Control tilde, and it lets you see all the formulas that you have in your sheet. So we have all our count ifs here. You can see they're all count ifs with the S, not count if, and they reflect it. It's a toggle, so press Control tilde, and it'll take you back into your regular mode so you don't see the formulas. So now it's basically making it look more pretty. Uh, I'm gonna add borders here, select my cells here, and add borders so it looks better. Do the same thing here, add some borders. Uh, this one, I guess I can. Do, I could have probably done it all at the same time. But I've got my borders there. Let's add, let's turn this one into a table. Control T to turn it into a table. Let's hope it doesn't do anything bad to it. Uh, like change the colors too much. Click OK. And that table style, uh, I don't want the bandit rows. So, so let's see if we can turn that off. Uh, that turned it off, that's not bad. So it worked it out. And the nice thing about the table feature is when you enter another row, let's tab to enter another row, I type in risk 10, the formulas and validation, they automatically copy down, right? So and I got a medium here, and let's make this one high, and I didn't need to do any copying down. If I didn't turn my range of data into a table, it wouldn't do that. I probably have to click and drag down to copy the data validation and then the formula. So that's a nice feature of the table. Uh, another thing to think about is when we start to scroll, you, you notice that we missed a lot of this up here. We want to keep that static. So what I can do is freeze frames here. Select on that cell where I want to freeze it, go under view, and then click freeze panes. It freezes it at that portion of the view here. You can see there's a dark line or a really light line here. So when I scroll down, everything here keeps, but everything here scrolls. So it gives you a nice view of whatever's static that you want to show when you present this. And that's how we can create our risk table and our risk matrix here.
Now going through the creation of the risk assessment table in this matrix was not that hard to do. Once you got it put in place, it's a template for you to use over and over again. Risk is always going to be around any project. And once you list those risks and look at ways to deal with those risks through a mitigation plan, it'll be easier to navigate all those minefields for your project or your process. Thanks for watching. And for more videos like this, click the banner at the end.